Is that you? It's all right, Linda. I came back. I just couldn't make it, Linda. I got as far as a little above Yonkers. Suddenly, I couldn't drive anymore. I'll get you an aspirin. It'll soothe you. The uh, car kept going off the road, you know. Maybe it's the steering again. I don't think that new mechanic knows a thing. No. It's me. I... I can't seem to keep my mind on it. Came about ten miles an hour. Took me nearly four hours to get back to Brooklyn. Willie, you've just got to take a rest. You can't continue this way. I had my vacation this year. But you didn't rest your mind. Your mind is overactive. And the mind is what counts, dear. So beautiful up there, Linda. I was even observing the scenery. Imagine me on the road every week of my life. The trees were so thick. The sun was so warm, I opened the windshield, just let the warm air bathe over me. And all of a sudden, I'm going off the road. I'm telling you, I absolutely forgot I was driving. Another few seconds. I have such thoughts. I have such strange thoughts. Willie, talk to them again. There's no reason why you shouldn't work in New York. No, they don't need me in New York. I'm a New England man. I'm vital in New England. But you're 60 years old, dear. They can't expect you to keep traveling every week. If old man Wagner was alive, I'd have been in charge in New York by now. That man was a prince. But that son of his, that Howard, he don't appreciate. When I went north the first time, the Wagner Company didn't know where New England was. Why don't you go down to the place tomorrow and tell Howard you've simply got to work in New York? You're too accommodating, dear. That I will. I definitely will. That's the one. Is that the boy? Yes. Happy took Biff on a date tonight. He's staying over since it's Biff's first night home. It was so nice to see them shaving together, one behind the other in the bathroom, and going out together. You know, say, like old time. You notice? The whole house smells of shaving lotion. <laughs> Willie, be careful when you talk to Biff. You mustn't lose your temper with him. You have a big evening? Yeah, gave Biff a real homecoming celebration, Pop. We had two of the most beautiful... <laughs> two very fine types, of course. Hey, what are you doing back? Oh, I, uh, I had to come back. Uh, they gave me the wrong samples. How did you... Get a line on a job yet? Pop, I just got off the train this morning. Give me a little time, will you? Yeah, but you, you made up your mind to stay this time. I don't know. All right, go back to Texas. Willie, please. Be a cowboy. I'm trying. Leave me alone, will you? Be a bronco buster. Enjoy yourself. Is that all you ever want to be? Farman? Stop worrying about him, Pop. He's going to be terrific. Get a good night's rest, huh? Night, Mom. You shouldn't have criticized him, dear. Who criticized him? I just asked him a question. Is that a criticism? Such an undercurrent in him. He's become a moody man. I think if he finds himself, then you'll both be happier and not fight anymore. Not finding yourself at the age of 34 is a disgrace. Beginning when he was young, I thought, well, young man, it's good for him to tramp around, take a lot of odd jobs. It's more than 10 years now. He's yet to make $35 a week. Trouble is, he's lazy. Please. Why'd he come home again? I'd like to know what brought him home. I think he's still lost. I think he's very lost. Biff Loman is lost. In the greatest country in the world, a young man with such personal attractiveness gets lost. You remember how they used to follow him around in high school? And he smiled at one of them and their faces lit up. When he walked down the street... Willie. Why don't you open a window in here? They're all open, dear. Mm. The way they boxed us in here. Bricks and windows. 
windows and bricks. You should have had a law against apartment houses. And the breath of fresh air in the neighborhood. The grass don't grow anymore. You can't raise a carrot in the backyard. Remember those two beautiful red oaks out there? And Biff and I hung a swing between them. More and more, I think, of those days, Linda. This time of year, it was lilac. Wisteria. What fragrance in this room. They should have arrested the builder for cutting down those trees. They should... Go down and get something to eat, dear. You're my foundation and my support, Linda. Just try to relax, dear. You make mountains out of molehills. I won't fight with him anymore. He'll find his way. <clears throat> Certain men just don't get started till later in life. Like Thomas Edison. I think. B.F. Goodrich. I don't know one of them was dead. I'll have a nice talk with him in the morning. I'll get him a job selling. He can be big in no time. Willie, huh? if it's warm on Sunday, we'll drive out in the country and open the windshield and take lunch. <laughs> Windshields don't open on the new cars. Why, you opened it today. Me? I didn't know. Isn't that peculiar? Isn't that a remarkable thing? What, darling? That is the most remarkable thing. What, darling? I was thinking of the old sedan, 1928, when we had that green sedan. Funny. I could have sworn I was driving that car today. Something must have reminded you. It's remarkable. Remember those days? Way Biff used to polish that car. <laughs> Dealer refused to believe there was 80,000 miles on it. You go to bed yet. I'll be right on. Yes, sir. 82,000 miles. <laughs> My boy Biff knows how to polish that car. Just a kid, but he puts his heart in his work. <laughs> One thing about Biff, he's not lazy. How long has that been going on? Biff, I wanted to talk to you about Pop. Something's happening to him. He uh, talks to himself. Oh, it's getting real embarrassing. I even sent him away on a vacation. Why doesn't he stop that? Why does he keep talking about me? I don't know, Biff. I think maybe he's worried because you're not settled. You're still kind of up in the air. It, it preys on his mind. There's one or two others depressing him happy. Yeah, what do you mean? Never mind. Just don't lay it all to me. No, 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 but I think if you just got started. Well, is there any future for you out there? Yeah. I don't know what sure is. I don't know what I'm supposed to want. What do you mean? Look, when I got out of high school, I tried working my way, shipping business, some kind or another. It's, it's a measly manner of existence. Yeah, Biff, but tell me, you really enjoy it on a, on a farm? Take this farm I work on in Texas. Now, they got about, they got about 15 new colts. And there's nothing more inspiring or beautiful than the sight of a mare in a new colt. And it's cool there now, see? And it's spring. And whenever spring comes to where I am, I suddenly get the feeling I'm not getting anywhere. What am I doing playing around with horses? That's when I come running home. I've always made a point of not wasting my life. And every time I come back here, I know that all I've done is waste my life. Gee, you're a poet. You know that, Biff? You're an idealist. Ah, uh, I'm mixed up very bad. Maybe you ought to get married. That's my trouble. You're a success. Are you con... Biff, all I can do now is to wait for the merchandise manager to die. I don't know what in the world I'm working for. Sometimes I sit in my apartment, all alone. And I think of the rent I'm paying, and it's crazy. 
But then that's what I always wanted. My own apartment, a car. And still, I'm lonely. Let's say I've got an idea. Remember Bill Oliver? Yeah, yeah, sure. Oliver's very big now, bigger than when you worked for him. But when I quit, he put his arm on my shoulder and he said, Biff, if there's ever anything you need, come to me. I think I'll go see him. Maybe if we could get $10,000 or even $7,000, we could buy a beautiful ranch. Yeah, I'll bet he'd back you, Biff, because he thought highly of you. I mean, they all do. You're well-liked, Biff. <laughs> I just wonder, though. I wonder if Oliver still thinks I stole that carton of basketballs. <laughs> he probably forgot that long ago. It's almost ten years. Anyway, he didn't really fire you. Sure, sure. Well, then what do you say? We could raise cattle, use our muscles. Men built like we are should be working out in the open. Loman brothers, huh? We'd be known all over the college. Gee, I'd love that bit. That's what I dream about, because everybody around me is so false. I'm constantly lowering my ideals. Ain't the ranch. We could do the kind of work we like and still be something. <laughs> you know, the trouble is, we weren't brought up to grub for money. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Neither can I. Well, then let's go. The only thing is there. And you just Yeah, said... but first I gotta show some of those... Pompous, self-important executives down at the store that Happy Loman can make the grade. You know, when that merchandise manager walks into that store, the waves part in front of him. That's 52,000 bucks a year coming through those revolving doors. I want to walk into that store the way he walks in. Then I'll go with you, Biff. Then I'll go with you. We'll be together yet, I swear. Too young, Biff. Too young and tiny. I want your schooling first. Doesn't he know Mom can hear that? Tell the truth, Biff. Have I ever given you a bum steer? Isn't that terrible, Biff? <laughs> don't leave again, will you? You gotta find a job here. You gotta stick around. I don't know what to do about it. You just listen to your father, and everything will be all right. Don't get down now, Biff. But talk to him in the morning, will you? Oh, Biff, huh? that football scholarship's right in the palm of your hand. We don't want anything to interfere, do we? Be plenty of time to go out with girls when you get out of high school. <laughs> you know, Biff, girls can be a handicap till you're old enough for them. Gotta watch those grades first, boy. So, they call you up on the phone, eh? Oh, 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 boy. You must really be making a hit. I've been wondering why you polished that car so careful. Hey, guys, come on. Hey, what's this, huh? Oh, boy. Shine up that car, boys. Don't forget. Here we have it. Abby, get the chamois to load up, Jeff. I'm doing my best, Pop. Got to use newspaper on the windshield, Pop. That's it, Bib. Show them how to do it. Use the newspaper like a pad. Good work, boys. Shine it up till it looks like glass. Using the old elbow grease, Pop. Don't forget the inside. How's that, Pop? Good job, gentlemen. Good job. Hold it for a pass, Pop. Coming at you! Not bad, eh? Have fun, Pop! Your old man's another Red Grange. You know, if anything ever happens to me, you can take right over as the captain of the team. Oh, sure, sure. What report, boy? Till this time, Dad. Gee, we were lonesome for you. Lonesome, eh? Yeah. You don't we miss you every minute. I'll, I'll tell you a secret. Don't breathe it to a soul. Someday, I'm going to have my own business, and I'll never have to leave here anymore. Like Uncle Charlie, huh? Bigger than Uncle Charlie, because Charlie's not like him. He's liked, but he's not well liked. Hey, where'd you go this time, Dad? Well, I got, uh, got in the car, went north to Providence. I met the mayor. The mayor of Providence. Sitting in the hotel lobby. Yeah, what'd he say? He said, morning. And I said, uh, got a fine city here, mayor. And I bought him a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> then I went on to Waterbury. Waterbury's a fine city. Famous uh, Waterbury clock. Mm -hmm. Sold a nice bill there. And uh, then up to Boston. Boston. Cradle of the American Revolution. 
fine city. Oh, gee, I'd love to go with you sometime, Pop. After graduation, next summer. Me too, Pop, promise? You and half an eye. Oh, <laughs> boy! I'll, I'll, show, I'll show you all the town. America's full of beautiful town boys. Fine, upstanding people. And they, they know me, boys. <laughs> uh -huh. Know me up and down, New England. Uh -huh. We'll carry your bags, Pop. They <laughs> won't that be safe. <laughs> me walking in the boats and swords with you guys carrying my bag. <laughs> oh, what a sensation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where'd you get the new football? Oh, the coach told me to practice my passing. That's so, and he gave you the ball, eh? Well, I, uh... I borrowed it from the locker room. Uh, I, uh, I want you to return that. I told you Pop won't like it. I'm bringing it back. He's got to practice with the regulation ball, oh. doesn't he? Coach, you probably congratulate him on his initiative. Oh, he keeps congratulating my initiative all the time, Pop. Because he likes you. Somebody else took that ball, it'd be an uproar. <laughs> hey, Fib! Hey, Fib, where you been? You're supposed to study with me Where's today. Where's Fox, Bernard? Oh, God, will ya? He's got to study, Uncle Willie. He's got Regents examinations next week. Listen, Biff, I heard Mr. Burnside say if you don't start studying math, he's going to flunk you and you won't graduate. I heard him, Uncle Willie. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? With football scholarships to three universities, they're going to flunk him. But I heard Mr. Burnside say he was oh, going to... Don't be a pest, Bernard. <laughs> Take him away, Hap. Don't, Hap. <laughs> I'll be waiting for you in my house, Biff. Uh, <laughs> what an anemic. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> Bernard's not well-liked, is he? He's liked, but he's not well-liked. That's right, Bob. That's what I mean. Bernard can get the best marks in school, you understand? But when he gets out in the business world, you're going to be five times ahead of him. That's why I think, Heaven, you're both built like Adonis. <laughs> because the man who makes an appearance in the business world, the man who creates personal interest, the man who gets ahead, be liked. And you'll never want. How is business, dear? Did you sell anything? Knocked them cold in Providence, slaughtered them in Boston. Oh, that's wonderful. How's my girl? <laughs> fine, dear. <laughs> Just fine. <laughs> oh, I'm glad business was so good. Couldn't have been better. 500 gross in Providence, 700 gross in Boston. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, that makes your commission over 200, 212 dollars. Well, I didn't figure it yet. How much did you do? I did uh, about 180 gross in proud. Well, no, it came to roughly uh, about 200 gross on the whole trip. 200 gross. See, the trouble is, uh, three of the stores were half closed for inventory in Boston. Otherwise, I'd have broke records. Uh, Seventy dollars and some pennies. That's very good. Since when do I let my girl carry things when I'm home? Now let's see how much we owe. On the first is nine sixty on the washing machine. Sixteen dollars on the refrigerator. Why sixteen? Well, the sand belt broke, and that was a dollar eighty. It's brand new. Oh, dear, but the man says that's the way they are, so they work themselves in. That's sixteen dollars. On the vacuum, there's three and a half due. And odds and ends, including the payment on the car, it all comes to around a hundred and twenty dollars by the fifteenth. Hundred and twenty dollars. I don't know what I'm going to do if business don't pick up. Oh, next week you'll do better. Oh, I'll like them dead next week. Yeah. Very well liked in Hartford. The trouble is, Linda, people don't seem to take to me. Oh, don't be foolish. I know the reason for it. They just pass me by. I'm not noticed. Why, you're doing very well. You're making between $70 to $100 a week. You're going to have to be out at 10, 12 hours a day. Other men, I don't know, they do it easier. Man should come in with a few words. It's one thing about Charlie, he's a man of few words, and they respect him. I talk too much. You're just lively. Well, I figure life is short. A couple of jokes. Uh, I joke too much. You don't. I don't know what's the matter with him. Maybe I'm not dressing to advantage. The handsomest man in the world. Oh, no, <laughs> To me, you are the handsomest. <laughs> Boys, Willie. Few men are idolized by their children the way you are. You're the best there is, Lynn. You're a pal, you know that? Sometimes on the road... <laughs> Oh. I just want to grab you sometimes and kiss the life out of it. I get so lonely. Especially when business is bad. 
nobody to talk to. <laughs> so much I want to do for... Me? Oh, you've done enough already, Willie. Oh, I'm glad I picked you. You picked me? I did. I've been sitting at that desk watching all the salesmen go by day in and day out. <laughs> <laughs> but you have such a sense of humor. Oh, we do have such a good time together, don't we? Sure we do. We have to go now. Oh, it's two o'clock. My sisters will be scandalized. <laughs> When will you be back in Boston? Oh, two weeks about. Will I see you again? Sure thing. Next time, I'll put you right through to the fire. Right. <laughs> Good night. Keep your pores open. <laughs> oh, you're just killing me, Willie. <laughs> you just kill me. <laughs> oh, and uh, thanks for the stocking. You're welcome. I love a lot of stocking. <laughs> You are willing to handsome, Miss Man. <laughs> You've no reason to fear. I'll make it up to you, Linda. Why, there's nothing to make up, darling. You're doing fine. What are you doing, mending stockings? Well, they're so expensive. I won't have you mending stockings in this house. Now throw them out. Hey, Biff. Where's Biff? I've been trying to find him if he doesn't study. I say, Willie. You'll give him the answers. I can't order regents. That's a state exam. They're liable to arrest me. Where is he? I'll whip him. I'll whip him. He's got to give back that football. It's not nice. Where is he? Why is he taking everything? He's too fresh with the girls. All the mothers are complaining. I'll whip her. He's driving the car without a light. Shut up. All the mothers are complaining. Shut up. Mr. Bernstein said if he doesn't buckle down, he's going to fight man. He's right, Willie. You've got to do something. There's nothing the matter with him. You want him to be warm like Bernard? He's got spirit, personality. He's loaded with it. He's loaded. What's he stealing? He's giving it back, isn't he? What? What is he stealing? What did I tell him? I never in my life told him anything but decent things. Pop. Uh, take it easy. You, you don't want to wake up everybody. Why does she have to wax the floors? She's killing herself. Come on now, Pop. It's getting late. Why don't we hit the sack? Where are you guys? Where are you? Pop, I told you. I'm going to retire you for life. You'll retire me for life and your 70 sticking dollars a week. Your women, your car, your apartment, then you'll retire me for life. I couldn't get past Yonkers today. The woods are burning. I can't, I can't drive a car. Everything all right? Yeah, Charlie, everything's all right. I heard some noise. It's dangerous living next door. You sneeze in here and in my house hats blow off. I thought maybe something happened. Nothing happened, Charlie. Come on, Pop. Let's go to bed. You go ahead. I'm not tired at the moment. Take it easy, huh, Pop? How about shooting a little casino? It'll tie you out a little. Okay. What are you doing up? Couldn't sleep good. I had a heartburn. And you don't know how to eat. I eat with my mouth. You're ignorant. You don't know about vitamins, things like that. What is it with those vitamins? They build up your bones. Chemistry. Yeah, but there's no bones in a heartburn. What are you talking about? Do you know the first thing about it? Now, don't get insulted. Well, then don't talk about something you don't know anything about. Why didn't I go to Alaska with my brother Ben that time? Ben. That man was a genius. That man was success incarnate. What a mistake. He begged me to go. Well, I don't see no use. There's a man who started with the clothes on his back and ended up with diamond mines. I'd like to know how he did it. What's the mystery? Man knew what he wanted, went out and got it. Walked into a jungle, comes out the age of 21, and he's rich. Willie, I'd like to take a trip to California. You know what I'm saying? I'll need an extra man down at the place. You want a job? You got a job, you know that. What are you offering me a job for? I don't see no sense to it. You don't have to go on. I got way. a good job. What do you keep coming in here for? You want me to go? Sorry. I can feel it. He'll go back to Texas again. Let him go. Forget about him. What have I got to remember? 
You take it too hard. When a deposit bottle is broken, you don't get your nickel back. It's easy enough for you to say. It ain't easy for me to say. Getting awfully tired, Ben. Good. Keep playing. You'll sleep better. Did you call me Ben? That's funny. For a second there, you reminded me of my brother Ben. Did you ever hear from him since that time he visited you years ago? Didn't Linda tell you? A couple weeks ago, we got a letter from his wife in Africa. He died. That's so. Yeah, I never saw him again. Since that time. Can't make this a very long visit, will you? Great many deals for him Maybe he left you some of his money. Yeah. He had seven sons. This one opportunity I had with that man. There are several rich properties I'm looking at in Alaska. If I'd have gone to Alaska with him that time, everything would have been totally different. Oh, no, I get a froze to death up there. What are you talking about? Opportunity is tremendous in Alaska, William. I'm surprised you're not up there. Sure, tremendous. Huh? Only man I ever met who knew the answer. Who? Oh. How are you all? Fine. Fine. Hey, pretty sharp tonight, huh? Mother living with you? No. No, she died a long time ago. Who died? Too bad. I don't hope to see the old girl. Fine specimen of a lady, Mother. I said, who died? What are you talking about? Will you? It's half past eight. I told you I haven't much time. I have to catch a train. Wait! Yeah. What do you... That, that's my bill. I put the ace. If you don't know how to play the game, I'm not going to throw my money away on you. Buy ace, for Pete's sake! The next time, I'll bring my own deck with five aces. I don't play that kind of a game. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah? Yeah. Ignoramus! Ben. Ben! 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 I've been waiting for you so long. What's the answer? How'd you do it? How'd you become rich and respected? Oh, there's a story in that. Tell me, Ben. Tell me. I was only three or four years old when you left home. Three years and 11 months. What a memory, Ben. I have many enterprises, William, and I have never kept books. Is this Ben? Why, how do you do, my dear? Where have you been all these years? Willie talks so much about you, I always wondered I missed you. how'd you do it? How'd you get started? Well, I started for Alaska. Due to my youth, I had a very faulty view of geography, William. I discovered, after a few days, that I was heading due south. Oh. So, instead of Alaska, I ended up in Africa. The Gold Coast! Principally diamond mines. Diamond mines! I'm sorry, William, I must leave you. I have an appointment in Ketchikan, Tuesday week. Oh. No, Ben! Wait! Ben! Wait! Boys! Boys! Listen to this. This is your Uncle Ben, a great man. Tell my boys, Ben. When I was 17, I walked into the jungle. When I was 21, I walked out, and by George, I was rich. You see what I've been talking about? The greatest things can happen. That's just the way I'm bringing them up, Ben. Rugged, well-liked, all around. Oh, yeah? Well, hit that boy hard as you can. Oh, oh no, sir. Come on, get to me. Just go ahead and show him. OK. Huh? <laughs> Good boy. Now, how's that, Ben, eh? Never fight fair with a stranger, boy. You'll never get out of the jungle that way. It was an honor and a pleasure to meet you, Linda. Have a nice trip. Ben, I don't want you to get the wrong impression about this boy. He's got a great deal on the ball. Biff, go over there where they're building a new apartment house and pick up some two-by-fours. No. We're going to rebuild the entire garage roof. Watch this, Ben. Yes, sir, on the double half. Good luck, William, with your... What do you do? Selling. 
Well, there's a living in it, I suppose. Too bad you're not more enterprising, William. There's a fortune to be made. Where? Where, Ben? Africa. Alaska. The world is full of everything. <laughs> Nervy boy, good. Oh, nerves of iron at fifty. Yes. You should have seen the lumber they brought home last week. Well, you shouldn't have let them do it. One day there'll be trouble. I'll stop by on my way back to Africa. Pull, pull up, Ben. Wait, Ben. My boys, there's so much I have to ask you. They're going to the jaws of hell for me, see? But I... William, you're being first rate with your boys. Outstanding, manly chaps. Oh, Ben, that's good to hear. Because sometimes I'm afraid I'm not teaching them the right kind of... Ben, how should I teach them? William, when I walked into the jungle, I was 17. When I walked out, I was 21, and by George, I was rich. I was rich? That's the spirit I want to imbue them with. To walk into a jungle. I was right. I was right. I was right. Willie. Really? Right. Don't you want to come inside? Did you get something to eat? It's very late, dear. Come to bed. Whatever happened to that diamond watch for? Remember? When Ben came from Africa that time? Didn't he give me a watch fog with a diamond in it? You pawned it years ago to pay for Biff's correspondence course. Gee, that was a beautiful thing. You're coming in. I need some air. Gotta break your neck to see a star around here. That was a beautiful thing. That done. What's he doing out there? It'll pass by morning. Shouldn't we do anything? My dear, you should do a lot of things. But there's nothing to do, so go to sleep. I never heard him slough. Come around more often and you'll hear him. He's not like this all the time, is he? When you come home, he's always the worst. When I come home, you write your coming, he's all smiles. He talks about the future. He's wonderful. The closer you seem to come, the more shaky he gets. Why are you so hateful to one another? Why is that? I'm not hateful, Mom. You sooner get in the door than you're fighting. Are you home to stay now? I don't know. Mom, I can't take hold. I just can't take hold of some kind of a life. If a man's not a bird, to come and go with a springtime. Your hair got so gray, Mom. Oh, it's been gray since you went to high school. I just stopped dying it, that's all. Well, dye it again, will you? I don't want my pal looking old. You're such a boy. You think you can go away for a year? Biff, you've got to get it through your head. That one day you're going to knock on this door and there'll be strange people here. What are you talking about, Mom? You're not even 60 yet. What about your father? Well, I meant him, too. Ah, he admires Pop. Biff, if you don't have any feeling for him, then you can't have any feeling for me. Sure I can, Mom. No. You can't just come to see me. Because I love him. He's the dearest man in the world to me. And I won't have anybody making him feel unwanted and low and blue. You've got to make up your mind. There's no leeway anymore. Either he's your father and you pay him that respect, or you're not to come here anymore. You promised you're going to clean out the garage after football practice, remember? What's the matter with him? 
Don't. Don't go near him. He's got no character. Charlie wouldn't do this. Acting like a lunatic. Not this own house, spewing out that vomit from his mind. Then make Charlie your father. You can't do that, can you? I don't say he's a great man. Willie Loman never made a lot of money. His name was never in the papers. He's not the finest character that ever was. But he's a human being. And a terrible thing is happening. So attention must be paid. He's not to be allowed to fall into his grave like an old dog. Attention. Attention must finally be paid to such a person. You called him crazy. I didn't mean... No. A lot of people think he's lost his balance. Well, you don't have to be very smart to know what his trouble is. The man is exhausted. A small man can be just as exhausted as a great man. He works for a firm 36 years this March. Opens up unheard of territories to their trademark. Now, in his old age, they take away his salary. I didn't know that, Ma. You never asked, my dear. Now that you get your spending money someplace else, you don't trouble your head with him. For the past five weeks, he's been on a straight commission. Like a beginner. An unknown. Those are great. Are they any worse than his sons? When he brought them business when he was young, they were glad to see him. Now his old friends, all the old buyers who loved him and always managed to hand him some order in a pinch. They're all dead, retired. He drives 250 miles to Boston. When he gets there, no one knows him anymore. No one welcomes him. What goes through a man's mind driving home without having earned a cent? Why shouldn't he talk to himself? Why? He has to go to Charlie and borrow $50 a week and pretend to me that it's his pay. How long can that go on? How long? You see what I'm sitting here and waiting for? You tell me he has no character. A man who never worked a day, but for your benefit. When does he get the medal for that? Is this his reward? To turn around at the age of 63 and find his sons who he loved better than his life. What a philandering bum. Hey, Mom. That's all you are, my baby. You. What happened to the love you had for him? You were such pals. How you used to talk to him on the phone every night. How lonely he was till he could get home to you. All right, Mom, all right. I'll live here in my room and I'll get a job. I'll just keep away from him, that's all. No, Biff. You can't stay here and fight all the time. He threw me out of this house, remember that. Oh, why was that? I never knew why. Because I know he's a fake. And he doesn't like anybody around who knows it. Oh, fake in what way? What do you mean? Never mind. Just don't lay it all at my feet. It's between him and me. I'll chip in half my paycheck. You'll be all right. I'm going to sleep. He won't be all right. I hate this city and I'm staying. Now, what do you want? He's dying, Biff. He's been trying to kill him. What are you talking about? I live from day to day. Last month, I was looking for a fuse. The lights blew and I went out in the cellar and behind the fuse box, it just happened to fall out was a length of rubber pipe. Just short. Oh, There was an attachment on the end of it. I knew right away. And sure enough, on the bottom of the hot water heater, there's a new little nipple on the gas pipe. Oh, that fool. Did you have it taken off? I'm ashamed to. How can I mention it to him? 
Every day I go down and take away that little rubber pipe. And when he comes home, I put it back again. How can I insult him that way? I don't know what to do. I tell you, I know every thought of his mind. It sounds so old-fashioned and silly, but he put his whole life into you. You've turned your backs on him. Yes. I swear to you, his life is in your hands. All right. It's all settled now. I've been one, miss. I know that, Mom, but now I'll stay, and I swear to you, I'll apply myself. It's it just... Mom, you see, I just don't fit in business. Not that I won't try, though. I'll try, and I'll make good. You'll see. Sure, Beth. Sure you will. The trouble with you in business was you never tried to please people. Yeah, I know. Like when you worked for Harrison's. Bob Harrison said you were tops. Then you go and do some stupid thing like whistling whole songs in the elevator like a comedian. Well, so what? I like to whistle sometimes. You don't raise a guy to a responsible job who whistles in the elevator. Biff, I'll tell you something I hate to say. In the business world, some of them think you're crazy. I don't care what the business world thinks. They laughed at Dad for years. You know why? Because we don't belong in this nut house of a city. We should be on some open plain, mixing cement or carpenters. A carpenter is allowed to whistle. I never in my life whistled in an elevator. Who in the business world thinks I'm crazy? Pop, I didn't mean it like that. Now, don't make a big thing of it. They laugh at me, eh? You go to any department store in Boston. Pileen, Slattery's, all. Call out the name Woolly Long and see what happens. Big shot. All right, Pop. Big! All right. Why do you always insult me? I didn't say anything. Uh, well, then, Beth decided to stay. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Poppy's settling down. He's going to see Bill Oliver tomorrow. Oliver? For what? Well, he always said he'd stake me, and I'd like to go into business, so maybe I'll take him up on it, that's all. Isn't that wonderful? Don't interrupt. Well, what's wonderful about it? There are 50 men in the city of New York who'd stake him. Sporting goods, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so, I... I know something about it. Something? You know sporting goods better than sporting. So, what's the proposition? Pop, I didn't even see him yet. Then what are you talking no, about? No, 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 wait a minute, Pop, wait a minute. I got an idea. When I was down in Florida last time, I thought of a great idea to sell sporting goods. You and me, Beth. We got a line. The Lowman line. We train a couple of weeks and we put on a couple exhibitions, you see? That's an idea. That is a one million dollar idea. Yeah, yeah, now, wait a minute, Pop. We form two basketball teams, see? Or two water polo teams, and then we play each other. It's a million dollars worth of publicity. Displays in all the hotels. Loman Brothers. Baby, could we sell sporting goods? Well, I'm in great shape. You guys together could absolutely lick the civilized world. Now look, tomorrow when you see Oliver, don't wear sport jacket and slacks. No. A business suit, hmm? And talk as little as possible. Don't crack any jokes. He did like me. Oh, he loved you. <laughs> Will you stop? Walking very serious. Money is the man. Be quiet, fine, and serious. Everybody likes a kidder, but nobody lends him money. And remember, start big, and you'll end big. Now, how much are you going to ask for? Gee, I hadn't figured. Well, don't, don't say gee. Gee is a boy's word. A man walking in for $15,000 does not say gee. Ten, I think, would be tough. Don't be so modest. You always started too low. Walk in with a big laugh. See? Don't look worried. Start off with a couple of your good stories to lighten things up. It's not what you say, but how you say it. Because personality always wins the day. Oliver always had that. Don't interrupt while I'm talking. Don't yell at her, will you? I was talking one night. I don't like you yelling at her all the time, and I'm telling you, that's all. What are you, taking over this house? Well, I was just going to say that all of... Shut up! Will you let me finish? Stop yelling at her, damn it! Don't curse in this house! Since when did you get so clean? You're my best of Oliver. You may remember me. Why did you have to start fighting again? You see how sweet he was when you talked hopefully to him. Don't let him go to bed that way. It takes so little to make him happy. Boy, what a woman. They sure broke the mold when they made her. He's off salary. Working on commission. I'm going to Oliver tomorrow and knock him for a loop.
That's the talk, Biff. That's the first time I heard the old confidence out of you. <laughs> oh, you're gonna live with me, kid. And any babe you want to meet, just say the word and I'll fix you up. Sure, sure. Second, I think, Pop. Yeah. Now, with Oliver, you knock him dead, boy. And, and if anything falls off his desk while you're talking to him, like a package or something, don't you pick it up. They have office boys for that. Tell him you were in business in the West, not, not farm. Don't undersell yourself. Not a penny less than $15,000. Okay, Pop. Good night, Mom. You got a greatness in you, Beth. Sleep well, darling. Remember that. You got all kinds of greatness. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, remember that Ebbets Field game? A high school championship in the city. Just try to rest, dear. When that team came out, he was the tallest. Remember? Yes, and in gold. Yeah. Like a young guy. Representatives from all the colleges. And the buyers I brought. The cheers when he came out. A star like that. They never really fade. Willie? What has he got against you? Don't let's talk anymore, then. I'm awful tired. The peonies are coming out. Oh, you go to show you. Nature fools you all the time. Hey, where'd you come from? Getting late, Willie, if you want more coffee. Yeah, I got plenty of time. I'm coming. You know, on the way home tonight, I'm definitely going to buy some seeds. I bet beets will grow back yet. That'd be wonderful. When not enough sun gets back there, nothing will grow anymore. You wait, kid. Before it's all over, I'm going to build a little place out in the country. And I'll raise some vegetables, a couple of chickens. All I'd need be a little lumber. Some peace of mind. What have you got there? A ladybug. You just found it. <laughs> That's good luck, Willie. <laughs> oh, you feel like a million. <laughs> Glad you mean sleeping till 10 on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> Tell me, how'd the boys look when they left? Biff wore his blue suit? It's so thrilling to see them leaving together. <laughs> Biff was very changed this morning. His whole attitude seemed hopeful. He could hardly wait to get downtown to see Oliver. No question. There are certain men who take longer to get solidified. He's good coffee. Ah, best in the world. And you're the best there is. <laughs> <laughs> I sewed the lining. <laughs> And I put your glasses and the saffron in the pocket. <coughs> Willie, when you talk to Howard today... Don't worry, I'll put it to him straight and simple. He'll just have to take me off the road. Don't forget to ask him for a little advance. Because we've got the insurance premium due. It's the grace period now. It's a hundred and some odd dollars. A hundred and eight sixty-eight. And you had that motor job on the car. And there's one more payment on the refrigerator. One more payment? 
But the belt just broke again. I know, dear, but it's old. Once in my life, I'd like to own something outright before it's broken. I'm always in a race with the junkyard. Just finished paying for the car, and it's on its last legs. The refrigerator consumes belts like a crazy maniac. They time those things. They time them, so when you finally paid for them, they're used up. <laughs> well, all told, about $200 would see you through. But that includes the last payment on the mortgage. After this payment, the house belongs to us. That is a great thing. To weather a 25-year mortgage is, is... It's an accomplishment. Biff would only take it and raise a family. Uh, I'll be home, Arlie. I forgot. Uh, You're supposed to meet them for dinner. Frank's Restaurant, 48th Street and 6th yeah. Avenue. That's so how about you? Just the three of you. They're going to blow you to a big meal. Was that Biff's idea? He came to me this morning, Lily. He said, tell Dad we're going to blow him to a big meal. I'm going to knock that Howard for a loop. So I'll get an advance and I'll come home with a New York job. No, I'm going to do it. Changing, Lily. I can feel it changing. Don't work hard today. Be careful on the subway. Terrence will grow back here, too. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. I seem to fade into blossoming dawn. The sun shone on me. Yeah, we'll talk with you. I'll be in a minute. That's my daughter. Oh, seven years old and get that phone. Uh, oh, what's that? Uh, what's that? Uh, uh, did you ever see one of these? The wire recorder. The most terrific machine I ever saw in my life. I bought it for dictation. You can record anything you like with it. Here, I had it home last night. All right, uh, can't we talk for a minute? I'd, I'd like to ask a little favor of you. Get this now. This is my son. Alabama is Montgomery. The capital of Arizona is Phoenix. The capital of... Arkansas Get that Arizona. alphabetical order. The capital of California. Five years old, will he? He'll, he'll make an announcer someday. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. The maid kicked the plug out. Certainly is lifelike. <clears throat> Hard for a few oh, minutes, couldn't we? Willie, the next is my wife. Hello? Go on. Say something. Well, you gonna talk? I can't think of anything. Well, talk. It's turning. Oh, Howard, I can't talk into this. That was my wife. That's a wonderful machine. Howard, I, I tell you, Willie, this is the most fascinating relaxation I've ever found. Think I'll get one myself? Sure, they only cost a hundred and a half. You can't do without it. Now, uh, supposing you want to hear Jack Benny, see? But you can't be home at that hour. So you tell the maid to turn on the radio when the Jack Benny program comes on, and this machine automatically goes on with it. When you come home, you come home anytime you like. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, get yourself a Coke, throw the switch, and there's Jack Benny in the middle of the night. I'm definitely going to get one, because uh, lots of times, you know, I'm on the road, you understand? And I think to myself, what I must be missing on the radio? Uh, say, um... Aren't you supposed to be in Boston? You didn't crack up again, did you? Oh, no. No. I'd be worried there for a minute. Well, what's the trouble? I've come to a decision. Tell you the truth, Howard. I'd rather not travel anymore. Not travel? Oh, well, uh, what'll you do? Would you remember Christmas time when you had the party here? You said you'd try to think of a spot for me right here in town? With us? Well, sure. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. See, the kids are all grown up now. I don't need much anymore. If I could take home, well, $65 a week if I could swing. And speaking frankly, it's between the two of us. I'm just a little tired. Well, you're a road man, Willie. We do a road business. If I had a spot for you, I'd slam you right in. But I just don't have a single solitary spot. Lord, I was with this firm when your father used to carry in here in his arms. I know that. Word. Your father came to me the day you were born and asked me what I thought of the name of Howard. May you rest in peace. All I need is my table. Fifty dollars a week. But where am I going to put you, kid? It isn't a question whether I can sell merchandise, is it? No, but this is a business, kid, and everybody's got to pull his own weight. you got to admit, business is business. Sure, business is definitely business. But I, I didn't become a, a salesman just for the money. 
But I had bigger opportunities. Years ago, my brother Ben asked me to go to Alaska and look after his timberlands for him. I'd almost decided to go when, when, I, when I ran onto a salesman in the Parker House. His name was Dave Singleton. 84 years old, and he drummed merchandise in 31 states. Old Dave. He used to go up to his room, you understand? Put on his green velvet slippers. I'll never forget it. Pick up the phone, call the buyers. Without ever leaving his room at the age of 84, he made a living. <laughs> when I saw that, I realized that selling was the greatest career a man could want. Because what could be more satisfying than to pick up a phone and be remembered and, and loved and, and helped by so many different people? Even when he died, he died the death of a salesman in his green velvet slippers, in the smoker of the New York, New Haven, Hartford, going into Boston. Oh, hundreds of salesmen and buyers attended his funeral. Things were sad on a lot of trains for months after that. See, in those days, there was personality in it, Howard. There was respect and, and comradeship and gratitude. Today, it's all cut and dry. No chance for bringing friendship to bear or personality. See what I mean? They don't know me anymore. Well, that's just the thing, Willie. Uh, if I had $40 a week, that, that's all I'd need. $40, Howard. Kid, I can't take blood from a stone. I... Howard, the year Al Smith was nominated, your father came I to me... See I'm people. talking yeah. about your father. There were promises made across this desk. Oh. I put 34 years in this firm, now I can't pay my insurance. I know that, Willie. You, you can't eat the orange and throw, throw the peel away. A man's got a piece of fruit. Now look, Willie, pull yourself together. I'll be back. In 1928, your father, right here in this office, he promised me... He... Mr. Wagner, don't you remember what you told me that time? How you put your hand on my shoulder? The night seemed to Ooh. fade into Howard! Howard! You didn't happen. Shut up! Shut up! Now look, Willie. I'll get some coffee. Now, Willie, look. Oh. It's all right. I'll go to Boston. Willie, you can't go to Boston for us. I don't want you to represent us anymore meaning to tell you for a long time now. Come on. Are you... Are you firing me? Well, I think you need a good long rest, Willie. When you feel better, come back. We'll see if we can work something out. I'm trying to earn money, Howard. I'm in no well, position... Well, where are your sons? Why don't your sons give you a hand? I can't throw myself on my sons. I'm not a cripple. You've got to let me go to Boston. Now, look, Willie, I got a line of people to see this morning. Now... Take five minutes out, get control of yourself, and then go home, will you? I need the office. Oh, yeah. Whenever you can this week, stop by and drop off your sample cases. Uh, Ch uh, Charlie there? No, I'll wait. Uh, Charlie, you, you want to be in the office for a while? I, I got to see you right away. No, it won't be long. A few minutes. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take the subway. You know what you're doing. Ben! How, oh, Ben? How? Oh. How, oh, Ben? How? Oh. Ben! There must be some answer. 
Now, let me see, William. I can offer you a great opportunity. I have just bought timberlands in Alaska, valuable timberlands. And I could use a man up there to take care of things for me. Timberlands? What could be better for me and the boys? When they finish school, we could grow up in those grand outdoors. You have a new continent at your doorstep, William. Get out of these cities. They're full of talk and time payments and courts of law. Screw on your fists and you can fight for a fortune up there. Yes. yes. Linda! Linda! But you've got a beautiful job right here. You're doing well enough, Willie. Enough for what, my dear? Enough to be happy right here, right now. But Linda, in Alaska... Why must everybody conquer the world? You're well liked. The boys love you and someday... Why, old man Wagner told him only the other day that if he keeps it up, he'll be a member of the firm. Didn't he, Willie? Oh, sure, Ben. I'm building something with this firm. What are you building? Lay your hand on it. Where is it? There's that man, 84 years old. That's right, Ben. Dave Singleman. When I look at that man, I'd say, what's there to worry about? I'm building a position, Ben. A future. Duh. Well, it isn't something you can feel in your fingers like timber, Ben, but it's there. I know it is. You take there, for instance... 18 years old without a penny to his name and three great universities are begging for him. And from there, the sky's the limit. This is not what you do, Ben, but who you know. And the smile on your face. It's contacts, Ben. Contacts. The whole wealth of Alaska passes over the lunch table at the Commodore Hotel. And that's the wonder of this country, that a man can end with diamonds on the basis of being well-liked. I've got to go, William. To the new continent at your doorstep. Walk out rich. Rich! Ben! Plus over a baseball game. Charlie, how many times do I have to tell you it's the All-Scholastic Football Championship? Oh, really? Charlie, there's no time for kidding. Oh, be careful, Willie, my flowers. You shouldn't have been so extravagant. <laughs> Diamonds wouldn't be extravagant for you, Linda. Hey, Pop, look. Hey, that's a fine job of printing. University of Virginia, huh? Yep. Pop, I've decided that's where I'm going to go when I graduate. Oh, wise decision. Southern schools are always good. Good teams, good manners, and Pop. This afternoon, just for you, I'm going to break through for a touchdown. Well, hey, you're supposed to pass. I'm taking one play for Pop. And you watch me, Pop. When I take off my helmet, that means I'm breaking out, and you watch me crash through that line. Good boy. Hey, here we are. At the speed. Let's go, Pop. I remember. You're coming home this afternoon, captain of the All-Scholastic Championship team of the city of New York. I got it, Pop. And remember, pal, when I take off my helmet, that touchdown is for you. <laughs> now go home, my babe. Now go home, I think that's funny, Charlie. This is the greatest day of his life. Willie, when are you going to grow up? When this game is over, you'll be laughing out the other side of your face. They'll be calling him another Red Grange. 25000 a year. It's Red Grange. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Better than everybody else, huh? <laughs> you don't know anything. Put up your hands. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what are you walking away for? I'm gonna whip the daylights out of you. Now stand there! Hey, buddy, who are you talking to? Yes? Mr. Bernard, is your father in his office? He's in with the accountant checking over some figures. Mr. Lowenstein. That'll be back in a minute. Very anxious to see 
All right. I'll be right out. Come in, Uncle Willie. Yeah, Bernard. <laughs> Look who's here. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah. What are you doing here? Oh, I just dropped by to see my father and get off my seat to the train leaves. I'm uh, going down to Washington in a few minutes. Oh, isn't he in? He's busy. He'll be back in a minute. Sit down, Uncle Willie. <laughs> What are you going to do in Washington? Oh, I'm arguing a case down there. Yeah, so? You don't play tennis there. <laughs> Staying with a friend who has a court. Don't say. His own tennis court? <laughs> Must be fine people out there. They are. Uh, very nice. Dad tells me Biff's in town. Yeah? Yeah, Biff is in. Yeah. He's uh, working on a very big deal, Bernard. Yeah. He's been doing very well in the West, but he decided to establish himself here. We're, we're having dinner. Really? What kind of a deal has he got? Well, it's uh, uh, Bill Oliver. He's a very big sporting goods man. He wants Biff very badly. He called him in from the West, long distance. Carte blanche, special delivery. So your friends have their own private tennis club. You uh, still with the old firm, Willie? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm overjoyed to see how you made the grade, Bernard. It's overjoyed. Yes, it's an encouraging thing to see a young man. It really looks very good for Biff. Very. Bernard. What's the secret? What secret? How did you... Why didn't he ever catch on? I wouldn't know that, Willie. Well, you're his friend, his boyhood friend. There's something I had never understood about him. His life ended after that Ebbets Field game. From the age of 18, nothing good ever happened to him. Willie, well, maybe this is none of my business. Say anything you like, but I, I regard you as a very brilliant man. I, I value your advice. Oh, I, I couldn't advise you, Willie. Really. But there's just one thing I've always wanted to ask you. Remember when Biff was supposed to graduate high school and the, uh, the math teacher flunked him? Oh, yeah. That teacher ruined his life. He laid down and died like a hammer hit him. No, he didn't. Uh, Biff just got very angry, but he was ready to enroll in summer school. He was. He didn't seem beaten by at all. But then, Willie, he disappeared from the block for almost a month, and I got the idea he'd gone up to New England to see you. Did he, did he have a talk with you then? Willie. Yeah. Yeah, he, he came to Boston. What about it? Remember those sneakers Biff used to wear? The ones with the University of Virginia printed on them? He was more proud of those than anything in the world, remember? I remember. And after he came back from Boston, he took those sneakers down in the cellar and he was going to burn them up in the furnace. I tried to stop him. We had a fist fight. It lasted at least a half an hour. Just the two of us, punching each other down there in the cellar and crying right through it. I often thought how strange it was that I knew when Biff burned up those sneakers, he'd given up his life. What happened in Boston, Willie? Nothing. What do you mean, what happened? The boy lays down, it's my fault? Willie, now, don't get sore. Well, don't talk to me like that. What does that mean, what happened? Hey, son, you're going to miss that train. Yeah, yeah, Dad. Oh, hello, Willie. Here, put that in your bag. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. How do you like this kid? Going to argue a case in front of the Supreme Court? Dad, no. Yeah. Supreme Court? Good seeing you, Uncle Willie. Like old times. Don't, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. Bye, Dad. Knock him dead, Bernard. Supreme Court. He didn't even mention it. He don't have to. He's going to do it. You never told him what to do, did you? You never took any interest in him. My salvation is I never took any interest in anything. Oh, uh, here's some money, Willie. Fifty dollars. Charlie, look. I've got to get back. Uh, I got my insurance to pay. If you can manage it, I need $110. That's an awful lot of money. Uh, I draw it from the bank, but then uh, Linda would know. I'm, I'm keeping strict account, Charlie. I'll pay you back every penny. 
Golly, I'm strapped. I'm strapped. I don't know what to do. I was just fire. I would fire you. Imagine that. That snot nose. I named him. I named him Howard. Willie, when are you going to realize those things don't mean anything? You named him Howard, but you can't sell that. The only thing you've got in this world is what you can sell. And the funny thing is you're a salesman. You don't even know that. I always tried to think otherwise, I guess. I always felt the man was impressive and well-liked, but nothing... Why must everybody like you? Why must you always be impressive? I know a man with a lot of money, a millionaire. In a Turkish bath, he looks like a butcher. But with his pockets on, he's very well liked. Oh, I know you're not fond of me, Willie, and nobody can say I'm in love with you. But I'll give you a job, if you want it. And you won't have to go on the road. I just can't work for you, Charlie. What, are you jealous of it? Can't work for you, that's all. Don't ask me why. Willie, when are you going to grow up? You big ignoramus. You say that again, I'll wrap you one. I don't care how big you are. You fool, you. You've been jealous of me all your life. Here. Pay your insurance. <laughs> it's funny, you know. After all the highways, the trains, the appointments, and the years, you end up worth more dead than alive. Willie, nobody's worth nothing dead. Did you hear what I said, Willie? Willie! Apologize to Bernard for me when you see him. I didn't mean to argue with him. He's a fine boy. They're all fine boys. They'll end up big, all of them. Someday they'll all play tennis together. Wish me luck, Charlie. Bipsy and Bill Oliver today. Good luck. Charlie, you're the only friend I've got. Isn't that a remarkable thing? Bartender, not to use the bar scotch. That's my boy, Stanley. Tell me, how are the lobsters tonight? Oh, great, great. Then make it three of the best you got. I want them with the claws. You better bring some wine, too. It'll put a head on the meal. Hey, what did you hear? A number or something? <laughs> no. No, it's a little celebration for my old man. My brother, I think he pulled off a big deal today. We're going in business together. Great, great. That's, that's the best for you. Family business, you know what I mean? Somebody steals, it's in the family. What's <laughs> <laughs> the matter? Notice I wasn't looking to the right or left, but I? No. My eyes are closed. Yeah. How did you know, Mr. Loman? I got radar or something. Got a life, Mr. Loman. Wait on her. <clears throat> uh, would you like a menu, madam? Well, I'm expecting someone, but I don't. Why don't you bring her? <laughs> Excuse me, miss. Excuse me. You mind? I happen to sell champagne. I'd like you to try my brand. Would you bring her a champagne, Stanley? <laughs> sure, sure. It's awfully nice of you. Don't mention it. It's all company money. <laughs> <laughs> Would you object to a compliment from a stranger? You ought to be on a magazine cover. I've been on several of them. What'd I say before, Stanley? You see, she's a cover girl. Oh, I could <laughs> see, I could see. <laughs> it's a charming product to be selling. Well, it gets to be like everything else. Selling is selling, you know. 
Even my trips to Europe lose their kick after a while. Yes, I suppose. Hiya, Biff! Hello, Sid. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Where's Dad? I don't know. I just got here. Uh, Miss... Uh... Forsyth. Miss Forsyth? This is my brother. His name is Biff. How do you do? I might have heard of him. Great football player. Oh, really? What team? Are you familiar with football? <laughs> no, I'm afraid I'm not. Biff is quarterback for the New York Giants. That is nice, isn't it? Ah, uh, here we are. <laughs> Champagne. You know what they say in France, don't you? Champagne is the drink of the complexion. <laughs> Good help. I'm happy to meet you. Hey, that's my name, Hap. It's really Harold, but they called me Happy at West Point. Oh, really? Isn't that coming? You like her? I don't think there's much chance. Are you kidding or something? Where's the old confidence, Biff? Watch this. Honey. You busy? I am. But I could make a phone call. Do that, will you, honey? See if you can bring a friend for Biff. He's one of the greatest football players in the country. I'll try. Don't try, honey. Try hard. Isn't that a shame now? A beautiful girl like that. That's why I can't get married. There's not one good woman in a thousand. Cut it out, will you? I want to say something to you. Oh, did you see Oliver? Yeah. I did a terrible thing today. It's... It's been the strangest day I've ever been through. I'm all numb, I swear. You mean... You mean he wouldn't see you? I waited six hours for him. Kept sending my name yeah, in. Yeah, but he remembered you, didn't he? Finally, about five o'clock, he comes out. He didn't remember who I was or anything. Did you tell him my Florida idea? I saw him for one minute. How did I ever get the idea I was a salesman there? I, I even believed it myself. Well, you were, kind of. I was a shipping clerk. And I didn't quit. He fired me. No, he didn't really, Biff. I stole those basketballs, Hap. He gave me one look this afternoon, and I realized what a ridiculous lie my whole life has been. We've been living in a dream. Yeah, 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 but what did you do then? Well, he... He left, see, and... I was all alone in the waiting room. Hap... I, I don't know what came over me. The next thing I know, I'm in his office. Panel walls, everything. I... I can't explain it, Hap. I took his fountain pen. His... Hey, did he catch you? I ran up. I ran down on 11 flights. I ran. Yeah, but that ran. was awful I... dumb, Biff. What'd you do that for? I don't know. I don't... I don't know. I had to show him. I had to show him. I... Now, look. You're going to help me. I'm going to tell Pop. What are you, crazy? What do you want to go no. and do that for? No, no, no. You got to tell him something nice. Say you got a, a lunch date with Oliver tomorrow. And what do I do tomorrow? So tomorrow, you leave the house, see? And then you come back tomorrow night and you say, Oliver's thinking it over. And Oliver thinks it over for a couple of weeks and gradually it fades away and nobody's the worse. I can't do that. Happy's got to understand I'm not the man somebody lends that kind of money to. He thinks I've been spiting him all these years and it's killing him. He's got to face the facts, Hap. There they are, Mr. Long. Oh. Hello, Scout! See, I, I haven't been here in years. <laughs> Hasn't changed a bit. Stanley, you want a drink, Pop? You sure, sure, I don't mind. Make it scotch, Stanley. Doubles all around. Yeah. Tell me, boy. Everything go all right? Well... I had an experience today. Terrific, Pop. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. yeah. Is that so? What, what, what happened? I'm going to tell you everything from first to last. It's, uh, it's been a strange day. Well, I had to wait quite a while for him. Uh, uh, Oliver. Yeah, yeah, Oliver. All day is a matter of cold fact. In a lot of instances, facts, Pop, facts about my life came back to me. Now, Pop... You remember when I worked for Oliver? Well, sure I do. Oh, go on. You remember Oliver fired me, and you remember why? I just want to get the facts straight. Now look, don't give me a lecture on facts or stories about the past, because I'm not interested. The woods are burning, you understand? 
There's a big blaze going on all around. I was fired today. How could you be? I was fired. And I'm looking for a little good news to tell your mother. This woman has waited. The woman has suffered. But just if it is, I haven't got a story left in my head. Now, what have you got to say to me? Well, here we are, gentlemen. Three double scotches. Now, tell me, what kind of a welcome do you give you? Well, Pop, can you have? How could you fire I'm you? out! I'm out! So he, he gave you a warm welcome, eh? Sure, Pop, sure. Warm welcome. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, you know, now that you mention it, Pop, he, uh, fine. Yeah, she gave me a fine welcome. Sure, he, uh, he, uh, came out very friendly and all, you know, shook hands all around. I was wondering if he'd even remember you. Imagine that man doesn't see him 10, 12 years, gives him that kind of a welcome. Oh, now, wait a minute, Pop, it wasn't quite... You know why I remembered you? Because you impressed him in those days. Oh, oh that's great news, Biff. Did he, did he take you into the office, or did you talk in the waiting room? No, no, he, uh... He came out first, see, yeah. and, uh, and, uh... What'd he say, what'd he do? Throw his arms around you, I bet you, huh? <laughs> He's a fine man. You're a very hard man to see, you know. I know, Pop. He offered you a drink. No. <laughs> no, he, uh... You know, he, uh, he had other appointments. He's a very busy man, and, uh, and yet... Hard man to see, you know, and... Then, then he told him my Florida idea, Pop. Oliver loved it. So he gave me the money? No, Pop! No, no. I can't lie to you anymore. Oliver didn't give me anything. You insulted him, didn't you? He didn't even know who I was. You're lying. I'm telling you the truth. Dad! I can't lie to you anymore. Dad! One day I kept sending my name in. He wouldn't hey, tell me. He didn't know me. I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm on here. You're going to listen to me. I waited six hours for him, see? All day, I kept sending my name. He wouldn't see me. Dad. Finally, about five hey, o'clock, he comes out. Come on. Where's Dad? What happened? I flunked math. Burnside flunked me. I won't graduate. I gotta see Dad right away. Well, he'll be in Boston until Saturday. Boston? What is he? I'm going to Boston. Took the pen and ran. Go. Go. Yes. I took the pen and ran. So now I'm all washed up with Oliver. You understand? Are you listening to me? Yeah. Sure. If you hadn't plunked math. Plunk math? What are you talking about? You stole Oliver's pen. Dad, I just explained it to you. I never intended to do it. Boston Oscar Hill, good evening. I'm not in my room. Dad, what's the matter? Bringing Mr. Lawman for you. I'm right there. Stop it. Look, Dad, I'll make good. I'll find something else, you understand? Now, don't worry about anything. Dad! Mr. Lowman's room doesn't ask her. Shall I page? No, no, no! Listen, Dan, Dad, listen. Look, I'm going to be all right. You'll see. I can still make an impression. Oh, it's going to be terrific, Pop. It's going to be terrific. You, you better go back and see Oliver tomorrow. No, Pop, I can't. Why not? Oliver fired me years ago for stealing the basketballs, and now I walk in with this fountain pen. That clinches it, don't you see? I can't face him like that. You don't want to be anything. Is that what's behind it? Don't take it that way. You rotten dog. Are you spiting me? Pop! I'm not spiting you. Can't you understand? Cut it out now. You're both in a restaurant. Oh, come on, Slugger. Forget about it. Come on. Anna, boy. Come on. Bring us out of the table. Sit down, pal. Willie! When you answer the door, there's someone at the door. Pop. Pop. Where are you going? Where's the door. Where's the door? What door? <laughs> Washroom. Get away! This is my friend, Letta. Hi. Hi. She may not be able to stay very long. I've got to get up early tomorrow. I've got jury duty. Were you ever on a jury? No, but I've been in front of them. <laughs> Well, come on, girls, sit down. We're wasting time. We'll have a big night tonight. Come on, Biff, gather around. What'll we do? Huh? Don't you care about him? Me? Hey, what are you talking about? Am I the guy who goes away? It doesn't mean him? anything to you, is that it? Look, you can help him. I can't. Don't you understand what I'm talking about? 
He's going to kill himself. Don't you know that? What do you want me to do? Help him. Help me, Ab. Help him. I can't. I can't bear to look at his face. He did. Have a drink. Not unless you have one. I don't want one. Oh, come on, drummer boy, smile. <laughs> From now on, I'll see that you go right through to the buyers. No waiting at my desk anymore. <laughs> hey, wait, tell him to go away. Nobody. It's Willie, really, there's somebody out there. It's getting on my nerves. All right, you stay in your room. If it's, if it's the hotel clerk, I'll handle it. Now look, don't come out. Biff, what are you doing in Boston? Dad, why didn't you answer? Well, uh, I've been knocking for five minutes. I called you on the phone. Uh, I just just heard you. I, I was in the bathroom, had the door closed. Anything happened home? Dad, huh? I let you down. What do you mean? Dad, Biff, well, what's this all about? Uh, uh, let's get out and get you a mall. No, Dad, I flunked math. I haven't got enough credits to graduate. I only got a 61. They wouldn't give you the four points to pass? Burnside refused absolutely. I begged him, Pop, and he won't give me the points. Now, look, Pop, you got to talk to him before they close the school, because, look, if he saw the kind of man you are, and you just, you know, if you just talk to him in your way, I'm sure he'd come through for me. Yeah. Would you talk to him, Dad? Come on. He'd like you. You know, the way you can talk. Yeah. You're on. We'll drive right back. Oh, good work. You'll go down and tell the room clerk I'm checking out. Yes, sir. Well, you see, the reason he hates me, Pop, is one day he was late for class, so I got up at the blackboard and I imitated him. I crossed my eyes. I talked with a lisp. <laughs> Square root of 62. <laughs> oh, I'll bet the kids nearly died laughing. In the middle of it, he walks in. No. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like you're having a swell little party without little me. That's not very friendly. Go back to your room, Miss Francis. Uh, this is Miss Francis. She's a buyer. She has the next room. We were just having a business talk. Really? What's the matter? You heard me. We're through with our business but discussion, Miss Francis. Go back. Well, really, well, I'll explain it to you. Uh, Well, you promised me stockings. Yeah, no, stockings. You want to bust a size nine here yeah. for me, and yeah. I want them. Yeah, now will you get out? Thanks. Don't forget to bring you're me welcome. up next time you're in town. It's yeah. been such Fine. fun. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, well, well, we better get going now. I want to get to school first thing in the morning. Uh, you get my things out of the closet, and I'll pack my valise. What's the matter? I told you she's a buyer. She buys for J.H. Simmons. You don't imagine. All right, get my things. Do as I say. I gave you an order, Biff. Is that what you do when I give you an order? Biff. Yeah. When you grow up, you'll understand about these things. You mustn't overemphasize a thing like this. I'll see Burnside first thing in the morning. Never mind. Never mind? He's going to give you those points. I'll see to it. He wouldn't listen to you. He certainly will. You need those points with you, Virginia. I'm not going there. Hey, hey, hey. Look, even, even if I can't get him to change that mark, you'll make it up a summer school. You've got all summer to... <laughs> oh, oh, my son. My boy. Dad. She's nothing to me, Biff. I was lonely. I was terribly lonely. <laughs> you gave her mama stuck. I gave you an order, you liar! You apologize for that. 
You fake. You phony little fake. You fake. I gave you an order. Fifth, come back here. I'll beat you. You hear me? I'll whip you. Come back here. I'll whip you. I gave you an order. I gave you an order. I gave you an order. I'll beat Hey, let's pick it up. Come on, pick it up, Mr. Lawman. Ain't you feeling well, Mr. Loma? Huh? Yeah, I'm fine. Can, can you make it all right? Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Sure. How can I? Yeah, Mr. Loma. Say, do I, do I? Do I look all right? Yeah, you look great, Mr. Loma. Just great. Yeah. Supposed to have dinner together. Why, I guess maybe Mr. Happy had to see the girls home. Mm. Mm. Here's a dollar for you. No, oh, you don't have to, Mr. Loman. Your son paid me. You take it. You're a good boy. Hey, where you been? I've chased you all over town looking for you. I've been right here. And I wasted practically my whole evening. Save it. Mom. Hey, hey. What are you doing up? Hmm? Oh. Oh, here, here I brought you some flowers, Mom. Put them in your room. What'd you do that for? Don't you care whether he lives or dies? What do you mean? What are you talking about? You invite him for dinner. He looks forward to it all day. Then you desert him there. There's no stranger you'd do that to. Desert him? I hope I don't outlive the Shut day. Up. Not one. Not another living soul would have had the cruelty to walk out on that man in a restaurant. Is that what he said? He didn't have to say anything. He was so humiliated he nearly limped when he came in. Pick up this stuff. I'm not your maid anymore. Pick it up, you bum, you. Where is he? I want to talk to him. You're not going near him. Get out of here, both of you. I sort it all out. Come to a decision. I'm not going to talk to him. Please. Leave him alone. What's he doing out there? He's planting the garden. Yes. something to take hold of. It's up to me, Ben. Man's got to add up to something. William, there is one proposition. Tell me, Ben. Tell me. Twenty thousand dollars on the barrel head. Guaranteed. Guilt edged. Terrific. Terrific. not honor the policy. Impossible. You paid all your premiums religiously. Well, it's wrong, Ben. It's the wrong thing to do. It's cowardly. Why? Does it take more courage to stand here? To ring up a zero? I don't know, Ben. Once this house used to be so full of light comradeship and good news. 
me carry my valises into the house. Polishing that little car. Polishing. Oh. If only I had something to give him. That boy could be so great. William. Huh? 20,000 is something that you can feel with the hand. It's there. You might hate me for it then. Why can't I give him something and not have him hate me? I'll have to sing it over. Don't waste time, William. It's a sound proposition. Sure, I wouldn't be making a fool of myself. Pop! Pop, what are you doing out here? Hmm? Don't you know there are people all around here? Do mm -hmm. that... you realize that? I could just see it. Can't see nothing out here. I'm saying goodbye to you, Pop. I'm not coming back anymore. Come on, we'll tell Mom. No, I don't want to see her. Why don't you want to see her? Don't bother me, will you? Did you plant, dear? Huh? All right, Mom. We've got to straighten out. I'm going. I'm not writing anymore. I think that's the best way, Willie. Because there's no use drawing it out. You'll just never get along. If people ask where I am, what I'm doing, you don't know and you don't care. Well, that way it'll be off your minds and you can start brightening up again. All right? You wish me luck, Scott? What do you say? Shake his hand, Willie. Not my hand. I was hoping not to go this way. That's the way you're going. Goodbye. May a rat near earth we leave this house. I want you to know on a train. The mountains, the valleys, wherever you go, you cut down your life for spite. No, no. Spite, spite's the word of your undoing. When you're down and out, riding somewhere beside the railroad tracks, remember that you killed your own father just as surely as if you stuck a knife in his heart. I'm not killing you. Pop, you want to know what's killing you? It's those phony dreams of yours about all of us being so big and important all the time. We never told the truth for one minute in this house. Cut it now, you cut well, it Well, now you're going to hear it. What you are and what I am. Stop it, Dick, stop it. You know I had no address for three months? I stole a suit in Kansas City and I was in jail. Please. Stop crying, I'm through with it. Go ahead, blame me. I stole myself out of every good job since high school. And I could never get anywhere because you blew me so full of hot air that I could never stand taking orders from anybody. I had to be boss big shot in two weeks. And I'm through with then it. Then hang yourself for spite. Willie, I ran down 11 flights with a pen in my hand today and suddenly I stopped. I stopped and I saw the sky. I saw the things I love in this world. The work and the food and the time to sit and smoke. And I looked at this pen and I said to myself, what am I grabbing this for? Why am I trying to become something I don't want to be? What am I doing in an office, Willie? Making a fool of myself when everything I want is out there. Waiting for me. The minute I say, I know who I am. Why can't I say that, Willie? The door of your life is wide open. Pop, I'm a dime a dozen. And so are you. I'm not a dime a dozen. I'm Willie Loman. And you're a fifth Loman. Yes, yes, I'm one dollar an hour, Willie. I've tried seven states and I couldn't raise it. A buck an hour to gather my meaning. I am not a leader of men, Willie, and neither are you. You were never anything but a hard-working drummer who landed in the ass can. I'm not bringing home any prizes anymore. And you're going to stop waiting for me to bring them home. Oh, vengeful, spiteful mutt. Pop. Pop. I'm nothing. I'm nothing, Pop. Can't you understand? There's no spite in it anymore. I'm just... just what 
I couldn't sleep right now. You go out. You look awful tired. Come right up. Sure. Sure. Two minutes. How magnificent that boy is going to be with $20,000 in his pocket. When the mail comes, he'll be ahead of Bernard again. <laughs> faster, William, faster. I always knew we were going to make it. Biff and I. He'll think I'm something for the first time, Ben. Because that funeral will be massive. They'll come from New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts. All the old timers with the strange license plates. And he'll realize that I'm known, Ben. Willie Norman is known. Remember, William, the jungle is dark but full of diamonds. Man, I'm frightened. One must go in to fetch a diamond out. I need courage, Ben. A diamond is hard, but it's something you can pick up with a hand and touch. Yeah. Yeah. Just about free and clear. Let's go. They'll be closing the gate soon, Linda. Be with you in a minute. Go on, Charlie. 
I want to just for a minute. I never had a chance to say goodbye. Forgive me, Willie. I can't cry. I don't know what it is, but I can't cry. It just seems to me that you're away on another trip. I keep expecting you. did you do it? I search and I search and I search and I can't understand it. I made the last payment on the house today. Day, dear. And there'll be nobody home. We're free and clear. <laughs> We're free. I know he had the wrong dreams, Biff, but don't blame him. Willie was a salesman, and for a salesman, there's no rock bottom to the life. He don't put a bolt to a nut. He don't tell you the law or give you medicine. He's a man way out there in the blue, riding on a smile and a shoeshine. And when they start not smiling back, that's an earthquake. And you get yourself a couple of spots on your hat, and you're finished. Nobody dares blame this man. A salesman has got a dream, boy. It comes with the territory. <laughs>